Hey guys, Bobby Thompson back with another video. And in this video, I want to talk about circumnavigation and how it works on a flat earth. And as always, before I get started, I wanted to share my favorite quote by Rene Descartes, which states, if you would be a real seeker after truth, it is necessary that at least once in your life, you doubt as, as far as possible, all things. And what that means is if you've never doubted the shape of the earth, you're not a real seeker of truth. If you just took that at face value, uh, you took what you were taught and you never challenged it and you never tested it, um, you're not a real truther. So with that said, let's move forward. I like to add some information to my uh, slides. This particular, I uh, just wanted to share, make sure we're all on the same page. We all know what longitudinal lines are and latitudinal lines are. and when we when we talk about circumnavigation or when we think about circumnavigation, it always jumps into our head, circumnavigation, uh, great circle circumnavigation, right? Or an example of that would be circumnavigation at the equator. You might imagine it at many different angles, right? Maybe at this angle or at this angle, but we don't think of it um, in small circles, right? We don't think of it at the 70th parallel north or the 60th. So if we were in South America and we started flying east in our imaginary plane and we kept going east, we would come right back to where we started. And if you take that further and you, you go to the 10th parallel north or the 20th, 30th, 60th, the same thing would happen, right? If, I, if I'm in uh, Canada and I start flying east towards Asia and I maintain an eastward heading, I'm gonna come right back to where I started. And the reason for that is that is is east, west, and south are products of north. So east is a 90 degree angle off of north. And as I fly a little bit, say I fly out here, right? East is this way now. And if I continue to fly, east is this way now, right? Because it's a 90 degree angle off of north. So you may not notice that you, you, when, you, when you're looking at an equator, it kind of tricks you into not noticing that. And it's not until you give it great thought that you can circumnavigate, or I shouldn't say great thought, just give it a little thought. It's not until you think about circumnavigation at the 80th parallel that circumnavigation works on a flat plane. This is, for all intents and purposes, uh, a plate, right? It's a, it's a flat plane. It might as well be flat earth, right? If I, if I go east and continue an eastward heading, I come right back to where I started. Now, 100 miles or 50 miles from the pole, you would obviously notice that. You would be constantly banking left, right? And you have to admit that because it's truthful and it's, it's honest, it's accurate. If I'm here, and I fly east, I'm going to end up over here. East does not go off into space. I think we can all agree about that, right? East is not, as much as we want to believe east is a straight line, it's not. Um, it's a product of north. So you should, hopefully you should, this should make sense to you and you should understand that we can certainly um, circumnavigate on a flat plane. But if it didn't, let me, uh, I wanted to share a video by David Weiss with Deep in the Rabbit Hole that'll hopefully drive the point home. Hopefully he doesn't mind me sharing his videos. I'm not taking credit for it. I recommend you visit his YouTube page, which has tons of great information. Here's our flat earth with our magnetic center. This is the shoreline that we call Antarctica that surrounds our world. And here's my boat. I put my boat down and immediately the compass points north. If I want to circumnavigate, I want to head west or east, but we're going to go west right now. So I'm heading west and as you see, west keeps turning. So I have to keep going and this is how when you go west, you end up going all the way back to where you started from. Same thing for east. I go east, I keep having to turn because my compass keeps making me turn to go east. 
If I want to go Dead Reckon West, so this would be Dead Reckoning West. If you watch the compass, I'm no longer going west. I'm going south. Any straight line on the flat earth will eventually become south. And that is how you circumnavigate on the flat earth. Nobody can circumnavigate south because when you go south, you keep on going. North, and as I pass North Pole, oops, I'm now going south, even though I'm going in the same straight line. All right, so east-west circumnavigation, done millions of times. It's done every day, flights uh, circumnavigate the, the Earth in an east-west fashion, right? But what's not done is circumnavigation in a north-south fashion. And here's an example of this. There's, there, there are tons of websites like this. Flight Radar 24 is just one of them, but you can go there and you can get flight statistics from flights all over the world and see all the flights in the air on any given day, which is what this is. And what you'll always see is that they're all confined to this area, um, and this is all east and west traffic, right? You, what you don't see is flights over here and down here. They're not traversing east and west. I also find it interesting how massive Antarctic is here. Like, what's uh, does that make sense? Anyway, um, but so flights, flights, all flights circumnavigate our Earth in an east-west fashion, which is perfectly doable, as we saw in the previous videos, the previous explanation. That works fine on a flat Earth. What does not work on a flat Earth is east-west. I'm sorry, north-south circumnavigation, which we don't see here, and we don't see it on a sphere. Um, that should set off a red flag. There are a few claims. There's, there's a handful of claims. Now, this is what's interesting is uh, Pan Am Flight 50 claimed to do a, a polar, a circumpolar navigation. And this should set off a couple flags. Um, Let's talk about this flight real quick. It started in San Francisco, went to the North Pole, London, Cape Town, South, the South Pole, Auckland, and back to San Francisco. So proponents of the globe Earth will argue that, no, they, 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 they kept going, right? They flew due south, and they came back around the backside of the globe. But that ob obviously didn't happen. If you were to look at the globe, this isn't the opposite side. It's a... Uh, they, they came in from the east, and they did a touch and go. Where's all the land they crossed? On, on this path right here, where is Antarctica beneath? Where, where is it all? It's not there because they didn't traverse it. They're admitting right here. This is from, this is from their official website, right? This is a, uh, they chronicled the website. They s saved it, whatever. Um, and... It didn't do that. Now, for the people who are pr proponents of the globe that want to go, oh, yes, it did. Yes, it did. Well, then, if that's the case, this is in 1977. If that's the case, and you do want to take that argument, then you're saying it's no problem. In 1977, we had the technology to fly, to circumnavigate the Earth over the South, uh, over Antarctica, over the South Pole. And if so many flights would be so much cheaper that way, why don't we do it today, Right. Why don't we fly from Argentina to, um, you know, some, some of these locations up here? Um, there's so many flights that would be so much cheaper if we could navigate um, over Antarctica. And another flight that claims to do that is Qantas. Uh, Qantas has a flight. Now, there's only a handful of these flights that even make the claim, right? But even looking here at, the, at this site, if you were to Google this, uh, this flight, this Qantas flight, uh, Qantas DR-14, it, it clearly didn't go over the mass of Antarctica. So 
one of the things, hopefully, when you're researching this is you, you'll understand that our government does it too, and it's still accurate. You can represent a 3D um, spherical Earth in a one-dimensional flat map, right? So, and it's still accurate, right? For this flight to be, to truly have traversed, to, to have gone under the ball and back up the other side, it would have to go over the center. Because when you take this and you represent it in a flat map, it's it just skipped along the coastline, right? So let's let's look here and I'll 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 tell you what I'll explain this. So I think every flight, I'm, I could be wrong about that, maybe maybe not military flights, but just about every flight that happens in the world is recorded. And you can go look at look up their coordinates uh, from a flight track log. And this particular website is Flight Aware, and you can look up QF14, which happened on the 5th of October, 2021, and it went from Buenos Aires to Darwin, Australia. And you can they've shared the coordinates here. You can see that they didn't go over Antarctica. They clearly didn't go over the mass of it. They went a very long path here they skimmed along the coast if if they did want to prove uh if this were a true uh, navigation over antarctica what you would do is you would fly due south and you would come out right here and this is accurate this this um you know this one-dimensional representation of the globe if you were to spherize it right here would be connected to right over here um, this would all wrap back around. So this would be a much shorter flight, right? To just go straight due south and come out the other side. But they didn't do that. So th to claim this as a uh, proves the sphere Earth, it, it's that's a, a, mi a great misrepresentation, right? All right, so another thing I want to talk about is celestial navigation, which is another proof of how we circumnavigate our Earth. Um, the earliest celestial navigation uh, device was the Antikythera mechanism. And that mechanism is, uh, I believe it's, let me see, yeah, 4,000 years old, sorry. So for 4,000 years, we've been doing celestial navigation. And if you top Google results, for those who want to debate it, the Antikythera mechanism is a forerunner of the sextant. You could say it's sextant 1.0, right? Um, what, came what came between the sextant and the Antikythera mechanism is the astrolabe. And for a long time, scientists called the Antikythera mechanism an astrolabe. I might be saying that wrong. It could be astrolabe. I'm not sure. How old is the sextant? Well, the, the sextant was developed in 1757 by Captain John Campbell. Was the sextant based on the astrolabe? The predecessor of the sextant is the astrolabe, right? So, and here we have some examples. This is what an astrolabe would look like. This is what uh, an early sextant, the backstaff or Davis's sextant and this is, I think that says the Goff's staff, um, but, but uh, ultimately led to the modern day sextant. Now, the reason I brought up that 4,000 years um, we've been doing celestial navigation is spherical trigonometry didn't come about until the first century AD. And you're, you may, and this is Britannica.com, by the way. I think that'd be pretty accurate. We can use that as a good source. Um, I just want to point out that I'm giving history the benefit of the doubt here because with all my other searchers, searches, you see, it'll be my top search. It'll see, it'll, you'll have my question typed out and then it'll have the response. The, res the first response was actually a couple decades later, right? So I went down and I said, oh, here's even an older one. I'm giving, I'm giving history the benefit of the doubt here and going with the oldest, res the oldest, um, claim that I could find. So the oldest is Menelaus of Alexandria, first century AD, Greek mathematician and astronomer who first conceived and defined a spherical triangle, right? A, a triangle formed by three arcs of great circles on the sur surface of a sphere. Um, 
So the problem with that is we'd been doing spherical navigation, or sorry, we'd been doing celestial navigation for 2,000 years earlier than that. There's no need for a sphere. Um, we just use plain, uh, plain geometry, right? Which is, you can see represented here. This would be an example of plain geometry. You have a plane, you have a degree angle to a celestial body, right? Even in modern day videos, if you look up celestial navigation basics on YouTube, this is one of the top ones that came up. It's explained using plain, this is, this would be plain geometry. This is a, uh, this is not spherical trigonometry. This is plain geometry, right? You're getting your angle to a celestial body um, from the from the apparent horizon, right? So you have the horizon, you have the angle to that celestial body, which gives you your distance, right? There's no need for a sphere. There's no, you don't have to, um, you don't have to make any other calculations than what's right there. Now. Another example, here's the, the astro lobby worked the same way, right? It, it just, you sighted a celestial object and you, you got your uh, angle of elevation from the horizon. Very simple. So what globe proponents want to do is they want to say that um, these devices work off of spherical trigonometry, uh, spherical geometry. Um, and it's actually been backed into science books, right? So there are books that show now uh, celestial navigation using the sextant, and they've they've backed in all these calculations for being on a sphere, which is ridiculous. And you know, mathematically, you can you can make a, 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 a you know, I'm terrible with math, so for me to come up with something like this on the fly, I can say four times four is sixteen, or I can say two times two parentheses times two divided by eight times four divided by two. I could go on and on and on and come up with the same result, right? It doesn't make one wrong. It doesn't make one right. Math can be used to deceive, right? If the, 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 the point here is that you can use, you, we did use plane geometry, and plane geometry is all the calculations you need. The only thing is you need is an angle to the celestial object off the horizon. There's, there never was um, any type of spherical geometry or spherical trigonometry. It's not necessary, but um, they've, they've actually backed it into science books now um, just because this is one of the best evidences of um, how we navigate a flat plane. So in closing, I just want to say if you're out there and, and you're researching this subject, um, be careful where you go for your information. Uh, there's some good content on YouTube, but a YouTube search is useless. If you do a YouTube search, you're going to come up with like five people, maybe six. You're going to come up with uh, Professor Dave, number one. You're going to come up with Brian Cox, Simon Dan. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Bill Nye, and Michelle Thaler, right? So it's uh, that's the anti-Flat Earth Army right there. But if you dig a little deeper, first find some good sources. Um, I, I'd be happy. I, I, from time to time, I'll share these sources. Um, Deep in the Rabbit Hole was one I shared. Um, Nathan Oakley, 1980, who's on YouTube. Um, Jaronism. Uh, there's a ton more, but they're going to be hard to find. But they will debunk their debunks, right? One thing you should never find ever is a debunk of a debunk. If you have someone like Neil deGrasse Tyson or uh, Brian Cox or Professor Dave using Eratosthenes as one of their top evidences, you know there's a problem, right? You know there's a lie. Or if they're using boats going over a curve, if that's their best evidence, those are easily debunked. And another thing you should never see is when a when a reputable um, company or organization or broadcasting service like, like PBS or National Geographic, you should never see anything they put out, especially if the point of it was to debunk Flat Earth. Debunked. And this has happened every time they've tried to debunk it. You can debunk their debunk, right? So that's a problem. 
dig deeper, find some good resources, reach out to people in the community who are, um, and be careful because there are, um, there's controlled opposition out there. There's, there's uh, flatter society is a perfect example of that. That's, um, that's a joke. Nobody follows them. Nobody goes there. Um, they're, they're just there to make flat earth look like a joke. So hopefully you found this video info informational and hopefully you continue your journey until next time.